Welcome to SharePoint Mastery Showcase, Episode 7, SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1, Part 1, with your host, Keith Hudson. At SharePoint Mastery, we help you master SharePoint one step at a time, so you can control your own destiny. Music by Kevin McLeod. At SharePoint Mastery, we want to help you learn how to become a SharePoint Power user as quickly as possible. To do so, we have prepared a 10-part video training course that will teach you how to create an actual SharePoint project from start to finish in just a few hours. We will show you everything you need to know to complete the project. We call this project SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1. How to design and build a basic help desk system in under four hours, even if you've never used SharePoint before. Welcome to SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1, presented by SharePoint Mastery. Find more free lessons on SharePoint at www.spmastery.com. This project is how to design and build a simple help desk ticketing system in under four hours, even if you've never used SharePoint before. SharePoint is so easy to use that as long as you know how to use a computer, including how to install a new program on your computer, and you can follow some simple instructions, you can be building your own business solutions in SharePoint in just a few hours. This course is divided into 10 parts so that you can digest it in small bites. Each part is between 5 and 10 minutes long. It is designed not just to teach you what SharePoint's features are, but rather to teach you how to go about analyzing a business process and designing a SharePoint solution to automate and streamline that process. In order to get the most out of this course, you will need a SharePoint 2007 site to practice in, and you will need design permissions within that site. If your company uses SharePoint, ask for a practice site. If you don't have one available at work, you can get a practice site at www.spmastery.com forward slash practice for $10 a month. I recommend that as you follow this video course, you build your own project workbook in Excel and your own solution in your SharePoint practice site. Actually working in SharePoint is the best way I know to learn SharePoint. You will also need administrator permissions on your desktop computer in order to install SharePoint Designer 2007 if you don't already have it on your machine, or you will need to ask your IT help desk to have SharePoint Designer 2007 installed for you. For this beginner project, we're going to pretend that you work in a small IT shop and that you are the person who receives computer desktop support requests and passes them to the appropriate desktop technician. Up until now, users with IT support needs have simply sent the help desk an email describing their computer-related problem and requesting help. You want to automate that process so that users get an immediate acknowledgement that you have received their help request along with their ticket number. You want to spend less time reading emails and give users a way to view the status of their ticket without having to call or email you. You also want to begin collecting data on how many desktop support requests come in and how long it takes to resolve them. For this project, we will assume that your company has three separate buildings and one desktop technician is responsible for each building. We are going to teach you a simple method of analyzing a business process and breaking it down into its component parts so you can design a SharePoint solution to automate the process. Before we start, let me make a couple of points about the design process. Your goal for your first project should be to build a simple working prototype. You can expand it later. While you are working on it, as you think of things that could be added to it, keep a record of those in a parking lot list. You can later modify your project to include additional capabilities. This is a good way to design any business solution in SharePoint as it allows you to test out your design in small increments. Back to our analysis method. We will call the SharePoint solution we are designing the system. The steps in this method are 1. Set out the basic operation of the system. 2. Identify the stakeholders. 3. Identify what objects are needed in the system. And 4. Record what actions the system needs to take. Once you have identified and recorded these elements of the system, you will be able to begin designing how the system will work. 
The four steps in designing the system are not necessarily sequential. As you work through each of the four steps, you might need to go back and add or clarify information in a previous step. It is a good idea to write down the information you are gathering about the system. A simple way to keep track of the information is to create a project workbook in Excel with tabs for the basic operation of the system, the stakeholders, the objects, and the actions. You can also have a tab with the details of the lists that you need to build in SharePoint. As you create more information surrounding the design of your system, you can add new tabs to your workbook as needed. Let's also add a parking lot tab. The basic operation of our help desk system is end users submit computer problems to the help desk. The system creates a numbered ticket and assigns it to a desktop technician. The system sends the user an email with the problem ticket number. The system also sends an email to the appropriate desktop technician advising them that they have a new ticket. The desktop technician corrects the computer problem and marks it repaired. The system then closes the ticket. Having recorded the basic operation of the system, the next step is to consider who the stakeholders are. Who will be using the system? In our example, we have end users, desktop support technicians, and IT managers who will want to see the statistics. For a large interdepartmental system, there may also be an executive sponsor who is helping drive the project. For our simple help desk ticketing system, we will consider you the executive sponsor. Most systems will also require an administrator. For this system, you are the administrator. Once you have listed the stakeholders for your system, you need to consider what objects are included in your system and their properties. We'll start there in part two. Thank you for joining us for this episode of SharePoint Mastery Showcase, presented by SharePoint Mastery, where we help you master SharePoint one step at a time so you can control your own destiny. Come visit us at www.spmastery.com 